Today's guest is Nicole, a freelancer looking to make smart saving and investing decisions. Nicole, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me. Tell me your story. Oof, okay, um, I'm a freelance uh, journalist, I would say, and under that cool. umbrella is a lot of options for me, and that's what I always wanted for myself. Um, so basically what that means is, for the most part, I get to make my own schedule, which is something I always wanted, and I get to spend my life writing and telling stories and finding interesting projects to work on on a daily basis. Pros and cons, obviously. Yes. Um, I always say to anybody that asks me about freelancing, you essentially wake up every morning and start from scratch. You start with a big zero. You start with zero. Yes. You uh, kind of are hustling, I guess, every single day to find new projects. And as much as that's exhilarating, it can also get um, really exhausting. And so you do have to kind of uh, learn how to say no. Yes. Because when there's so many options available to you, obviously the tendency is to take them all. Well, because you don't know if it's going to stop. Exactly. And I've had contracts that have just ended abruptly. And if I didn't have a few things on the go already, it really felt like I was scrambling. Um, so I would say my main jobs as a freelancer, um, I work for CTV Vancouver. Um, I do hosting and producing with them. Uh, I work for the UN Women Advisory Committee as a PR media consultant. So I help get the word out about the things that we're doing in Vancouver on behalf of UN Women. I work at Jelly Marketing as a PR consultant as well um, and then besides that I just write articles in my spare time which believe wow. it or not I do actually have it sounds busy <laughs> what is your favorite thing to write about I love speaking to everyday people who are just extremely passionate about sometimes what could seem like the most random things I think one of the favorite one of my favorite interviews that I've ever done was with a um, a pinball wizard, I'll call him. He uh, had autism, but he had won all these pinball championships because he was able to just zero in and focus so intently. And I actually interviewed him at one of the very few bars in Vancouver that have pinball machines. Yes. And so he was playing pinball as I was talking to him and he just opened up on such an, a deep level. Oh. And I just love speaking to people that care about what they do and that and could just be see. something as simple as pinball wow and to see that other side yeah and does it ever scare you that you may not have a paycheck coming in one day oh that is the big question or do you um, just not think about it I I think about it all the time but there's a difference between me being aware of it and me being worried about it. Yes. So I choose every day not to be worried about the lifestyle that I have chosen, um, but to be very aware about each decision that I make and really see my time as more valuable. Um, so I really base the projects that I choose on one, whether or not I'm passionate about it, and two, how much time it's going to take me. Not necessarily yes. a dollar figure, yes. but is it going to take me two weeks to finish this is it going to take me a couple of days and that's how I kind of calibrate and prioritize which projects I say yes or no to and then do you put some money away in savings for the rainy day like do you have a slush fund in case you go through a period where you can't work what if what if you were yeah. ill I think um, what I definitely do is, like I said, I always have uh, wheels in motion. So yes. I always have multiple projects that I'm working on, anticipating that one could end at any given time. Okay. Um, I would say last year, I was probably making the most that I have as a freelancer. I felt like my, my worth and my skill and my experience finally all aligned and right. I was getting paid what I wanted. Um, three months later, three contracts ended abruptly for different reasons. Yep. And I was kind of stuck all of a sudden living a lifestyle that I really liked to having to hustle and scrounge again, what felt like. Ugh. And so I learned a really important thing last year, Good. which was that I always have to live within um, not my means, but what will happen at if I was to make the bare minimum. Yes. What, what does my life look like then? And everything else is a perk. Well, that's, you sound like you've got a good <laughs> handle already. What's your big question for me today? Really, Sybil, my big question is how do I save and where do I start? That's the big thing as a freelancer is, you know, how do I actually put a plan in place that's going to help me be successful in the future? Well, you've come to the right <laughs> spot. Don't go away. Find out what Nicole should do after the break.
The Wealthy Life is brought to you by investment dealer Raymond James. Life well planned. See what a Raymond James advisor can do for you. Welcome back. We're here with Nicole to answer her question of how much should she save and how should she invest it? Well, Nicole, that's a great question. It sounds like you've got an exciting career <laughs> as a freelancer and do all kinds of wonderful things, but it really is living paycheck to paycheck in a way. Yeah. So your big question, how do you save? What do you do with it? It's an important one. Mm -hmm. You're young, you've got time on your side, and the power of compounding. Mm -hmm. Number one recommendation I have for you right off the get-go, you need to build a buffer. Mm -hmm. You need to have enough money in a savings account to cover at least three to six months worth of income. Do you have disability insurance if you weren't able to work? No. No. So that's something else that I suggest you look into. As a freelancer, it may be hard to get and it may be a little bit more expensive. Mm -hmm. So the other option is to self-fund and save. But really, how would you pay your bills if you couldn't work? And I hate to be the doomsday girl here, but <laughs> when you're prepared for the unexpected, when it happens, it's not as stressful. Absolutely. And at some point, I'm guessing you're going to want to retire. It would be nice. Okay. And if even if retirement's a dirty word and you still freelance until you're 102 and then <laughs> drop dead, it'd be nice to get to a point where you can retire and then you're working because you love it, not because you have to. Let's pretend you're retired right now. Okay. What I can get into that. All right. <laughs> what do you need per month to live on? Ooh. What would you like? I Realistic. Can, okay. Bare minimum, I would say three grand. Okay. But I would prefer six. Okay. So, in order to generate $6,000 per month, which is $72,000 a year, I'm going to jump ahead 30 years. Okay. Okay. In order to generate that, you need to save ballpark about $1.5 million to generate that kind of income. In order to do that, if you invest wisely and start saving today $1,300 every single month, hmm. you'll get there. Now okay. your bare minimum of $3,000, it's half that. Mm -hmm. So you need to save about $750,000. That sounds crazy. <laughs> but if you start saving about $650 a month right now, you could get there. The rate of return, I'm assuming, is a middle of the road 5% average rate of return. Now, when it comes to investing, there's low, medium, and high risk investments. I would suggest because you have time on your side, sit down with a financial advisor to go through all your options, but maybe even just a diversified balance portfolio will help you meet your goals. Okay. Does that sound doable or scary? Uh, a little bit of both, to be honest. I like how you keep saying time's on my side. That's very encouraging. Um, and investing in the stock market and looking at a diversified portfolio is something I've actually been really interested in, um, especially as I, you know, I'm 26, but 30 is kind of looming and it feels like I should really have my life together by then. Then you will. So just get started, invest your money, and you'll be set for life. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. Stay tuned. Learn what it means to die without a will and how to avoid it when we return.